Hi, I'm Kristen White, and I invite you to join me each week as I interview experts who talk about the things that matter to you here on The Ripple Effect. The FDA wants to label cigarette packages with large graphic warnings so people will know that smoking kills. But an appeals court says this steps on the First Amendment free speech rights of the tobacco companies. Some of the nation's largest tobacco companies are trying to block the mandate from the FDA to include images of a man exhaling smoke through a tracheotomy hole in his throat or a mother enveloping her infant in a plume of smoke after a mother's kiss. The warnings were to cover the top of the cigarette packages front and back and they would include an 800 number to a stop smoking hotline. In recent years, more than 40 countries have introduced warning labels such as the proposed labels by the FDA. The World Health Organization says these labels have played a significant role in encouraging people to quit. In Moscow, most young children bring a fish or a small pet to school for a session of show and tell. But the children in one Russian village got to show off a lion cub. The five-month-old cub was found by the children after it escaped from a car on the way to the zoo. The teacher kept the lion in the gym where the children played with the cub while waiting for police. In Cleveland, what if someone broke into your house not to clean you out, but to clean you up? This is the case with an Ohio woman dubbed the cleaning fairy. The 53-year-old woman broke into a home and washed some coffee cups, took out the trash, vacuumed, and dusted inside the house. Then she left a $75 bill for her services on a napkin, including her phone number. The woman told authorities she was bored and she has used this strategy in the past to get some new clients. This time she got a year of probation. In London, a man climbed naked onto a statue of a horse and brought traffic to a halt in Whitehall. This is the government district in the UK. Witnesses say the man ripped off the sword of the 19th century bronze Duke of Cambridge and placed it in his mouth. It took several hours for police to talk down the unclad cavalier. He now faces 12 weeks in jail. Here in the U.S., according to a report from the Fiscal Times, someone out there is getting a raise and it's coming from you. When it comes to government employees, there's plenty of news about laid off social workers in Florida furloughed forest rangers in Minnesota, and underpaid teachers everywhere. Yet there are thousands of government employees who are cashing in. Since 2005, the number of federal employees earning $150,000 a year has jumped tenfold, going from 12,000 to 172,000 individuals. Much of this increase has been in the field of medicine, specifically doctors in prisons and in veterans hospitals who averaged about $179,000 a year for salaries. Now, one California federal employee who also billed for overtime and bonuses earned a whopping $596,000 last year. That's the good news for now. I'm Kristen White. Coming up next, nutrition expert Gita Sidhu Rob. You'd like to live a healthier lifestyle, but quite honestly, your schedule is just too busy. And it feels like it's difficult to implement all the things that you feel that you need to do to get to that point. Well, my guest today, Gita Sidhu Rob, is here to give us some easy and effortless ways to have a healthier lifestyle and to feel that vibrant energy, especially if we are trying to be at that peak level of wellness. Gita, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. 
So Gita, I understand you're here from the UK. Your company is Nosh Detox. Yeah. And you started it with a pretty interesting but yet scary experience in your own personal life. Yes, I was working as a corporate lawyer and my first child got really, really sick. Um, and he had asthma, eczema, anaphylaxis, he had cardiorespiratory arrest, he died in my arms and we resuscitated him. And he just never got better. You know, no drugs, no steroids, nothing made him better. So after a year of trying, I took him out of the medical system and I thought, I'm just going to do this myself. So I used different alternative methods of healing and I came to understand that there's just one thing in life that really, really matters when it comes to your health. The only thing that predicates how you feel, how you look, how you think, how you focus, your success depends on what you will put in your mouth every single day. You know, as a mother myself, I can't even imagine having a child that's yeah. that sick. It was pretty awful. I mean, in his first 365 days, we spent 260 days in hospital. I knew the emergency nurse so well, I was a bridesmaid at her wedding. <laughs> That's like way too much time in hospital. You know, you raise a really interesting point. It's, it's not just about having a healthy lifestyle, but when you have a chronic condition, whether it's allergies or a autoimmune disease, that sometimes conventional treatment alone can't turn it around for you. No, and, and the thing is, is doctors treat illness. So they come at a space and look at this illness and they think, how can we cure an illness? What we do at Nosh Detox is we treat wellness. So you, you can look at anything from a chronic disease. And I really want to stress that this is even just about, you look at a paper and think, I'm not taking this information in. I'm not understanding this. I'm finding it hard to work today. My performance isn't good enough. All of that is dependent on literally what, what goes in your mouth. You know, it's interesting, and I know we're sitting here in front of this table and, and we're looking at well, a muffin and some chocolates. You know, when we're busy as mothers or yeah. as professionals, oftentimes we just grab what's in front of us. Absolutely. And there is an entire industry built around what's in front of you should taste fast. You know, it should be salty, it should be sweet, it should be instant gratification. And the problem is, is that the health industry has, has, is finding it difficult to provide those solutions instead. It's getting much, much better now, but um, it's, it's really hard because that muffin you can find every four yards down the high street. Right. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because I know we think in the morning that, oh, well, this is healthy. You know, I'll just grab a piece of fruit. I'll grab a banana. I'll grab a muffin. I'll have a cup of coffee. I mean, that's like standard fare, whether you're in the UK or in the US. Yeah. And is that the right thing to be starting our day with? Well, I'm a really big believer in starting your day with, with fruit. I think that's a fantastic thing to do because your body, you wake up generally very dehydrated and your body really, really has spent an entire night dumping the toxins into your lymphatic system. And it has no, you know, you have two circulatory systems in the body. On one side, you have your blood system, which is pumped by the heart. Mm -hmm. On another side, you have the lymph system, the lymphatic system, which collects all the gunk from the blood, but it has no pump. So the only way the rubbish that's collected in the lymphatic system leaves your body is when you move. So the minute you start moving, your body actually needs you to dilute and enable that to leave. So fruit is fantastic. But fruit, there are certain very basic rules. Eat fruit as raw as you can. Eat it on its own and don't mix it with anything for at least 10 minutes. Because if you do, it turns into acid in the system. If you don't mix fruit with anything, it just turns into this awesome elixir of life that goes straight through you and does everything it needs to do. Okay, so if we were to break this into steps, just starting in the morning, you say fruit... Yep. Not mixed with anything else. Nothing else. And then you can go on from that. You know, after 10, 15 minutes, you can go and you can have oats. You can have... Um I'm, I'm just a, not a big believer in having gluten in anything. I think it's very bad for the system. The way we make gluten these days is, is, is modified. So it's just very different to the gluten that your parents and my parents used to eat. Right. So have rye bread, have spelt, have you know barley, have any of those types of things. And again, with a non-dairy product. Have it with an oat milk. I actually think soya milk is not as bad as it's made out to be. You'd have to drink so much for it to actually interfere with your health at all. So you could, that, that would be breakfast. And, and if you're having a bowl of oats, put in seeds, put in nuts, and that will keep you going. You can chop an avocado even if you feel like it, or, and that will keep you going pretty much till lunchtime. So for all of you watching us this morning, um, it sounds like it's simple on one level, 
but it feels a little complicated because we're needing to buy things that we don't normally purchase at the store. We're having to rework our habits. You are, yes. Um, but actually, what that means is that if you were going to go and exercise, um, you would have to put that into your routine. We talk about success rituals. We say right. put in success rituals into your life, which will enable you to succeed. So take one step every day. Just don't make the earth shatter one step a day, <laughs> and I'm good with that. Even if you separate your fruit from your other food, it's a bonus. If you put it, ultimately, the, the fact of feeling satiated is very different to feeling full. And that's important to understand. You feel satiated, ultimately, when you mix, and this is a really big secret in the health industry, when you mix fat and you mix protein, you are satiated. And it is incredible. If you took, um, like I have breakfast where I mix avocado and a banana and I'll put in some form of protein. I'll put in nuts, I'll put in a pow powdered protein, chia seeds are very high in protein. I'll blend that. I cannot eat for three and a half hours afterwards. I mean, it's, it's against conventional wisdom. That's so much fat in there. Wouldn't it make you feel bad? No, you feel fantastic and you're not hungry. It's snacking that kills you through the day as well. I love what you're talking about here, this whole idea of success rituals yeah. for our wellness. So it sounds like a great one is to start with fruit. What's another easy to implement success ritual? Um, the one that you hear all the time, which is drink loads of water. Right. Right, drink loads and loads of water because why do you need water? You need water because your lymphatic system needs to dilute in order to leave your body in the many ways your body excretes toxins. And water is the fastest way to maintain health because it makes the lymph dilute. The other success ritual is that if you spent just one or two days a week going completely gluten and dairy free, Completely, and I don't mean oat gluten, but completely gluten and dairy free, it would literally change how you felt. It would change your physique, bloatedness, puffiness, it would change that completely. Okay, so start with fruit in the morning. Yep. Drink loads of water. How much water are we talking about? Well, I mean, you don't want to go insane, but I tend to... <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if you have to work at it, you're not going to do it. Right. So I tend to open a bottle in the morning and I finish that till lunchtime and I open another bottle at lunchtime and I finish that till the next morning. And that's just what I do. And I try and do that every day and it gives me a measurement of how far I've gotten the day. And the third thing you said I think is really interesting is to uh, have an occasional, I guess we'll call it a fast, where you're not having gluten and you're not having dairy yeah. for that day. And that will take out just some of the puffiness I know that, that we can Huge feel. Um, you know, I, I know that sometimes, um, you know, I travel a lot and there's days where I just feel a little foggy in the morning. Yes. Um, what would contribute to that? The fact that your body is just struggling to create, to, to manage what you've put into your system mm -hmm. and break it down. You know, people talk about how motherly love is the most important love right. in the world. And you know, we, we look at that because my life is based around how much I feel about my child. But there is a love that is greater than motherly love. The love that your body has for you Mm -hmm. is more important than any other love you will ever meet in the world. Whatever you put in your system, your body is always going to try and break it down, make good out of it, and dump what's not good for you. So when you're feeling foggy, what your body's going is going, it's going, hang on a minute, I'm just having to deal with this stuff <laughs> that you made me eat, and when I've dealt with this, I'm coming back to you. And the thing is, is when you clean the windows of your body and you, you look through clear, crisp, shiny glass, mm -hmm. it makes the biggest difference. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I look at my age and in my age group, the majority of women are doing facelifts, they're doing everything else that they can. And you think, okay, do it by all means, I'm with you on that one. Right. However, take a step back and clean yourself up. If you purify and neutrify your system, mm -hmm. you will automatically look so much younger. Wonderful advice. If if someone is sitting at home and they're like, God, I love what she's saying, I want to feel better, what's one thing that I can implement today? What would you say to them? I would say the thing that had the single biggest effect in anything that you do is to give up gluten and dairy for a few days because it gives your body time to rest. It gives, your it gives you time to find out what's actually going on because they are very suppressive markers in your body. So if you gave up all milk, just give up all milk and everything that has milk. And then just don't eat pasta and bread for a few days. You know, you can eat other things like oats. Um, I ate a lot of porridge when I first started this. I had porridge with oat milk like all the time because <laughs> I couldn't work out what else to eat. But you know, rye bread, America is fantastic for this. Europe is fantastic for this. There are alternatives that belong with rye, oats, spelt. Use those grains, use quinoa, which is mm -hmm. a fantastic grain. Um, and, and eat that instead, but up the level of protein as well in your diet.
Gita, thank you so much for oh, being you here. For Incredible me. insights. And you know, it's interesting now that you mentioned about the muffin. You know, it looks great, but what you're talking about is so exciting. I think that it's worth, you know, moving in that direction and, and being willing to try. It won't even feel like a sacrifice. No, it won't. And really, if you're looking at this, I mean, I would eat the chocolate before I would eat the muffin. Well, that's good news. Yeah, I would, I would, I would eat the chocolate. <laughs> Let's be clear about this. So I would eat that, but I would eat that before I'd eat the muffin because my body would digest and process that much easier mm -hmm. than it would the muffin. For me, the muffin is something I would do as dessert right. from time to time. Good news for all of us girls. So thank you so much oh, for being here. For Gita Sidhu Rob, all the way from the UK and the CEO of Nosh Detox. Thank you so much. Coming up next, get naturally fit with holistic fitness expert, Kimberly Johnson. We're gonna work on squats today, which will work our quads, our legs, our hips, but mostly it's gonna give us that little boost that we like in the booty. So we can do this at home. If you grab onto a countertop, the most important thing, as you well know, as I said before, is form. So you want your feet hip distance apart, and what we're gonna do is you're gonna hold on to that countertop and come back, just like you're sitting in a chair. Now if you have a chair, and this is your first time squatting, I recommend this way. So you're going to pull the chair behind you, and all we're going to do is sit and stand. That's what a squat is. Sit and stand. How easy is that? Sit and stand. I'll do this for a minute, and you will feel it. So every day, if you do a little something for a minute, I mean, you're standing in the kitchen, you're cooking, and what my mom always said is, a watch pot never boils. So do something with your minute. This is it, this is perfect. So just sitting and standing. Beautiful. When you get going on this and your form gets pretty good and you feel comfortable, you're gonna remove the chair and then your squat will look like this. So you always wanna get that booty back. That's the advance. But for now, we're just gonna keep sitting. Perfect. Thanks guys, that was your minute of fitness. Great job today. So all you have to do is a minute every day, and just a little bit will create a great ripple effect, and you will love your body even more. If you have any questions or concerns, you can email me here at The Ripple Effect, and I will be happy to help you with your situation. Coming up next, retirement expert, Sue Ferreira. I'm Kristen White, host of The Ripple Effect. If you enjoy the interviews on the show, well, I have good news for you. You can learn more from these amazing experts who appeared on the show. All you need to do is go to the website, kristenwhitetv.com, and guess what you'll find there? An extended interview, more than 15 minutes long, about all of the extra wisdom that we just couldn't even fit into the show. So go to Kristen White TV online, look up your expert's name, and learn everything else that they had to contribute that we simply couldn't fit into the show. See you on the website. With tens of millions of baby boomers soon facing retirement, Let's face it, it can be kind of scary out there. We don't really know what's going on with the stock market, with the economy, and really in the world as a whole. Well, my guest today, Sue Ferrara, is the creator of Your Retirement Dreams, and she's here to help us put some of this fear at ease. Sue, welcome. Thank you very much, Kristen. It's great to be here. So what's going on out there? Well, I think an awful <laughs> lot. I think there's a huge amount going on out there, and I think there's probably much more than a lot of people realize. And uh, as you say, we know that we have this huge demographic of baby boomers going through 
uh, their later years. And uh, a lot of them, uh, I probably estimate it's not just an American problem, a US problem, it's, it's Canada, it's Australia, it's the UK, and a lot of other countries that are non-English speaking. There's well over 80 million who already in the English speaking world have, uh, know that they don't have enough money to see them through all of the later years that they're gonna have. And uh, there's lots of issues. One is I think, um, you know, we've had a pretty good life and we didn't save, we all know that. <laughs> Then 2008 was the kind of big whack that came and hit people even further. Thirdly, I think what a lot of people haven't done is realize just how long they're likely to live. Like a generation ago, uh, life expectancies were maybe for men in the 60s and women just about 70s. Now we're looking at the high 80s. So you're looking at funding another 15 or more years, which is huge, especially because a lot of those years, you're gonna be fit. I mean, I'm an old age pensioner, but I feel really young and fit. So you're gonna use your money. And then I think there's all those other factors that people really haven't thought about yet, such as uh, the huge inflation that's likely to be coming down the, li the line. You can't be printing all these dollars and think it isn't going to devalue your dollar. And another huge one, I think, is the issue of pensions. So there's like, Multiple, multiple factors coming together to increase the perfect storm. You know, Sue, it just sounds like a tremendous amount of pressure. You know, here you are, we have this dream that when we retire, you know, whether we've been a teacher our whole life or we've worked for a corporation or even worked in the government, <laughs> no matter what country we live in, mm. we think, oh, these are my golden years. I'm going to be able to travel. I'll be able to paint. I'll be able to do whatever it was that I was too busy to do when I was working. And it just seems like that is simply not a reality. Well, it isn't a reality <laughs> if you say it's not a reality. If you do the flip side and you say, yeah, I can still do it, then you can still do it. And that's, I have this program that I'm developing called Live Your Retirement Dream which is saying, hey, you know, don't just go down and get gloomy and pull the head, <laughs> pull the clothes over your head and saying, I don't want to be there. Yeah, there are certainly things you can do. We had an expectation of the golden years, and now I say we're probably looking at the tarnished brass years. But, you know, um, <laughs> the tarnished if, brass you years. Really, <laughs> if you really have the attitude that nothing can be done, then nothing will be done. So I think it's very possible. I think it's very possible to generate added income, uh, to make more money, f to help you through your retirement. But at the same time, you can go on and live your retirement dream. So there is, it sounds like, a need for a mindset shift around this whole experience. So what would be a place that, that someone who's watching, who feels this fear, am I going to have enough? Will I be okay? Mm. Where can they start to shift that into feeling more peaceful? Well, I think, first of all, they have to acknowledge it. And I think that's where a lot of people aren't. I think, you know, as humans, denial is probably one of our greatest <laughs> characteristics. And I think a lot of people have still got their head in the sand. So I would first say to everyone, pull your head out of the sand and just look at it, face it first of all. Once you face it, if you're already in the situation you're in, you're gonna have to change. You're gonna have to move out of a comfort zone. And that's another mindset thing, right? Because we don't like change and we like our comfort zones. But I think that's what it involves. But in fact, once you make that idea and you make that change, you can actually move out of the comfort zone easily. And that's what my, my program and my book are designed to help you to do, to say, where am I now in finances, with my mindset, with my knowledge, with my health? Let's find out where we are now, and then let's just move forward and well, you can, you can create a plan to take you to where you want to be. You have such an interesting background. I'd love to hear a little bit about it. <laughs> well, I've been an anesthesiologist for 40 years, putting people to sleep, and now I'm enjoying <laughs> waking them up to the possibilities of their retirement. Uh, and things come along in life that whack you and change your direction. And uh, I went through a divorce at 60, which is, you know, kind of late in life, and there's a lot of people in my situation and I really empathize with them. So you go through a divorce late in life and suddenly out of a divorce, your financial situation is not what it was, right? Now, Sue, you're a physician. Mm. I mean, and I'm sure that many of our viewers think, well, of course the doctors and the lawyers and the professionals have this figured out, but in fact, is that true? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and in fact, you know, in many ways, I think they're more vulnerable than a lot of other folks. 
because they're often they're A-type personalities, they're driven and they're focused and they're on a path. And I know from my colleagues that, I mean, they're wonderful folks, but they're focused and they're driven. And in medicine, you don't have time to think because the patients keep coming in, right? And mm -hmm. so everything else really doesn't come into their life and they focus on their career. And then they come to the end of their career and the finances may not be what they think they are because they haven't focused on them. And I think another huge challenge is that I have many, many friends who've retired, uh, certainly men, and then they, they don't know what to do with themselves. And their wives, <laughs> who are friends of mine too, will come up and say, he's driving me nuts. He's just like a puppy at my heels. And these guys are lost. And they have another kind of challenge to live their retirement dream. I see a lot of them just go back to work again. And uh, that's kind of sad because, you know, I always say, hey, this life isn't a dress rehearsal. So if you have any dreams, you have any passions, when are you going to do them? And I see that quite a bit. I, don't, I think in many ways the professions have a, a huge problem when they come to retirement. It's a good point. Yeah, so what is the first step? I mean, we want to live this retirement dream. It clearly looks different than it used to. Mm. What's step one, Sue? Step one, without <laughs> a doubt, is knowing where you are now. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes... So where I start with coaching is, is the financial thing, because that's easy. So I'll just to say to someone, you know, do you, if, I, if I asked you right now, could you tell me exactly how much you spent on groceries or how much you spent on going out and entertainment in the last month or the last year and tell me within two seconds? Most people say no because they don't have those kind of flow sheets. And for me, that's where you start. You have to have a knowledge of what's coming in, what's going out. And I know that sounds so obvious, but I'll bet you in at least 80%, maybe higher, that just doesn't happen. So unless you know where you are now financially, you're going nowhere, right? Because you don't know how much you need in the future and you don't know where you're going. The next big thing is always mindset, and we know that. That without a mindset that is can do rather than can't do and I'm keeping my head in the sand, that's another huge one that we have to solve. The knowledge, once we get over the finance and the mindset, dealing with the health issues and how that will impact you and dealing with uh, knowledge issues are relatively simple. But those two big boo, 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 finance and mindset are the ones that are a challenge. So in your opinion, what time do you think people should start looking into this? 40 years before they need it, but most <laughs> of us don't. I mean, that's really the issue. Um, I, I think... I think the sooner the better. I mean, the ones I think are really smart are the ones who are thinking about putting retirement away when they're in their early 30s and planning and planning and planning. Uh, like my kids, my kids are in their early 30s. Um, but it's tough for those kids at these days. If you haven't done that, then it's as soon as possible. And for those in their 60s, it's today. And I, that's, that's what I really like to to focus on and say, you don't have the time. You don't have the time to recover. So the sooner you start, the sooner you start planning. Yesterday was too late. Today's perfect. Tomorrow's just, tomorrow never comes. So I would really like everybody to, to just stand back and say, look, where am I now? Look at every single thing, because it may not be what, they ex what they're thinking that's, it is. That's sad and I true. think it's, yeah, I think it's huge. And uh, it probably realistically will take anyone two to three years to get up and running if it goes efficiently. Mm -hmm. So again, the time was yesterday, but today's today, today's the day to start. Very, very wise words from Sue here at Live Your Retirement Dreams. Thank you so much for being with us here on The Ripple Effect. And I'm sure you've inspired some unexpected entrepreneurs out there today. So thank you so much, Sue. Absolutely my pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, only one drop of wisdom is all it takes to transform your world. I hope you enjoyed the insights from our experts today here on The Ripple Effect. I'm your host, Kristen White, and I'll be back with you again with more experts from around the world next week.